Welcome back everyone, I'm Craven and this is Trails the Second Chapter. As you can see, Sherazard is perfectly fine. <laughs> On our way back down here, we healed up and made sure she was a-okay. Cause she really got a beating last time. And in all honesty, I felt a bit bad of not resurrecting her before the end of the fight, but... You gotta make choices, you know what I mean? So, for today, what we're gonna start off with is... We have a blue key card, so we're gonna go by all the blue rooms before heading up the blue elevator. And this is the first one, the very first door in the entire facility. For just a chest. Uh, I'm still hoping for a very big payoff or something like that. Ursepit 200. Now that all my contents are gone, I feel so lost. What's my purpose? Why am I here? Who am I? You're a chest and everybody just staring at it. All right. So I'm guessing, I think that's all on this floor. I think the next one will be in the darkened area. So yeah, let that over there, unless I come across another blue room along the way. Alright, the blue door in the darkened room. It's curious, curious that uh, even despite every light being off in here and everything turned green, except the switch uh, on the door, we can clearly see it's still blue. Fire Sabbath 200. I've been looted two games now. I won't stand for this much longer. Sue me. <laughs> All right, and uh, I did came across another blue door uh, along the way, but I thought it's on the same floor. Let's head over to this one. So next of all, back to the elevators. Okay, so what's behind door number three? Windsepith. We're gonna get every element, isn't it? <laughs> I don't mind. Because extra sepith, never a bad thing. Watch out! There's been somebody going around looting all my friends. And I think... I think he just got me. I did. I felt that chest all over. Alright, so it's on this floor. Uh, we're gonna do the elevator last, of course. So... Which one was there more? Ah, we could uh, go outside here. We didn't uh, watch this last episode, did we? Naptime cookie. You found a scrap of paper with a naptime cookie recipe written on it. Learned the naptime cookie recipe. Ooh, nice. But uh, the thing that I find more interesting is this uh, little old satellite. Okay, but what can that recipe do for us? It is definitely the strongest. <laughs> A sedative soaked baked treat <laughs> does drowsy damage. Okay, if they can't resist it, it will definitely put them to sleep. I check the hallways here. Because it feels like there should be one more door here somewhere. Nah, there isn't. I'm still missing one door in my head. Because we had a corridor where we went through. Oh, no, I think I know where it is. I think I know where it is. It was here. Yes. Yeah, sometimes you just have to uh, look it into your mind's eye. And we knew there was another door, because we still haven't gotten one type of sepith. There it is. Last bit of it. I've been looted so many times that I'm thinking of putting in a request to the Brazer Guild to catch the culprits. Yo, go for it. Not gonna be the one that say it's uh, totally useless. Ooh, 
so close, Shira. You could have definitely hit that. Alright, that's it. The only thing left for us to do is to head to the elevator and go onto the roof. Well, that was at least the assumption when talking to LA is that uh, there is a plane up on the roof. So I'm pretty sure it's not going to be an entire new area before we head uh, over there. There is the fourth floor. I was totally expecting like a real rooftop elevator type thing that you open up the door and you're directly out on the roof. So maybe I was right uh, with last time that there might still be an actual enemy on top when we have to fight. Savor the victory. We earned it. <laughs> there at least is a, let's say, a larger concentration of drones here trying to protect uh, the exit. Oh, oh, that sneaky game. Putting it right back before I could finish it. Nah, I'm not gonna use my CP. I'm gonna build it up. So it might be actually yeah. be used in a useful manner. Mm, let's take this one. Yeah, the other one might just be on the edge. <laughs> Zin, however, he can definitely take that the one uh, down. I do wonder if their attempt is to slow us down from getting to the roof. I'm getting curious and curious to what the actually is on top of that. Twice, really? I appreciate getting Zin to 200. That's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, another red room, <laughs> a healing spot right in front. Yeah, it uh, spells out a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> So now we're gonna get the actual boss of this facility. Jaegers? Joshua. They're gonna make me fight him? Joshua. Joshua. Joshua, say something. Why, why are you so cold? Wake up, wake up. Oh no. Hmm. Joshua? E Estelle? Why... Why are you here? Oh, thank I, Dios, you're... Hang on, I'll... Damn it, get away! I don't think that's Joshua, is it? Because wasn't the clothing of Joshua a little bit different now? I don't see the white scarf or anything like that. I think this is an illusion, maybe? Or he's also on the mind control. Maybe. No, I, I don't know. I don't think this is Joshua, is it? What then? Joshua? Wh what? 
Oh, it's a robot. No. It's a dull weapon. How vile. Huh. But did you see the... Ooh. Dead is powerful. Did you see Estelle's reaction when he attacked? She uh, got his number straight away. Guys, come on. All right. Up our stats. Mm, let's see. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. I love that attack so much right now. Uh, yes. This ought to perk you up. Did Zin get all his CP back again by hitting all three of them? Oh, that's amazing. It's like a free hit. He's taking them down almost totally by himself. Oh, I have such a big smile on my face right now. An archism modeled after the Black Fang has his techniques programmed into it. Not all of them, because trust me, the real Joshua ain't this weak. Take the one that's probably too far away for Zin anyway. Uh, I do want to use the Thunder Kick, but I don't think it's necessary to be able to handle it by himself. They messed with the wrong guy. Chain 3. Hmm, nice. Does that mean all four? Or did he not just not learn it yet and the rest has it? <sighs> God, that was tough. Let me guess. Wiseman. <gasps> <laughs> you were just a fraction too slow in realization of the deception, I fear. I'm afraid this is check and mate. What? Oh, hell. Ah. This is... Can't stay awake. It's such a cowardly act, isn't it? Does uh, fit Wiseman uh, very well. Hmm, it was a bit too easy a sport, really. But at least your reactions were amusing. It may be a small token of gratitude, but allow me to invite you to a place I think you'll find very interesting. What's happening? <gasps> he took Estelle. Probably because, despite everything, I think Estelle is still Joshua's weakness and Wiseman knows Joshua is coming. Even if he isn't even there yet. Ah, uh, talk about walking right into a snake pit. Hey, Estelle, are you... What is it? Estelle! Someone tell me this is a bad joke. Oh, 
Over there. Damn it. It's a very uh, chic <laughs> little chair, isn't it? Is it made out of glass or holographic material? Now, wise men probably like some type of holographic material he can sit on. Just to make himself look cool. Besides, I don't think he wants uh, glass splinters up his butt. <clears throat> oh, crap. Blast. Are they trying to recruit Estelle, maybe? Because that's the only two things that come up to mind. Like, use her as a hostage against Joshua. Or try to convince her to join the Enforcers. Which I think will be an impossible task. But you never know what they might offer her. Estelle! Intriguing. Definitely. This is Estelle. Joshua. W why? It's it's okay. It's enough. <gasps> I I was always just a broken puppet. I can never go back to being human. That is really horrifically cruel. So, enough. Enough. Estelle never saw him as broken. Thank you. Goodbye, Estelle. No. No! <gasps> wow, what a scream. Are you okay, Estelle? Ren. Oh, good. Just a dream. <laughs> Did you have a scary nightmare? Yeah, a total nightmare. Not as freaky dull as even showing up in my dreams. I mean... Wait a second. Ren, what are you doing here? <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to act all surprised. You're so late back, Estelle. I love that about you. Yeah, well, forgive me for not being on the ball right after waking up. Anyway, where... Oh, it's not so odd for me to be here, you know. We're actually at our brand new base. I told you, I told you they were off to another base. Hmm, look out the window. Uh, okay. What? It's a sky base, isn't it? Would you look at that? That's impressive. That's a warship, if I ever saw one. Holy crap, look at the size of that thing. It's making the RSA look like a pipsqueak. Uh, 
yeah. Welcome aboard the Crimson Ark, the Glorious. The ship could beat up an entire army. And don't you think it's the best toy ever? Y you, you people, what are you planning on doing with something like this? Ah, our guest has finally awoken. Welcome aboard, Estelle. I trust your nap was restful. I'm sure you're quite out of sorts, being brought aboard with no fanfare. Fear not, we haven't brought you here to cause you any harm. Far from it, in fact. You're free to relax here. So why don't we take the chance to have a nice chat. About society, about our goals, and about our common friends. I think I can answer many of your questions. Fine. Not like I have much of a choice, so let's hear it. Ah, excellent. I'll be waiting. Uh, Ren, be a darling and show us still the way up here, would you? <laughs> sure, okay. Ah, come on, Estelle. Let's go to the sanctuary. The sanctuary? <laughs> it's a really pretty room on top uh, deck of this ship. And the professor's waiting for us there. Ah, uh, alright. Show me the way. Ah, you don't need to be so serious. I think you'll really like what we have to say. Hmm? What do you mean? <laughs> you'll just have to find out. <laughs> anyway, follow me. Come on, come on. Yeah, they're definitely gonna try and recruit her. Because why else would they explain their doctrine to her? What they are all about, what their mission is. Yeah, I, I don't trust it. Wise man is too much of a... Uh, can I say prick? <laughs> yeah, but uh, we'll have to see. So let's have a look around. She said top deck, so anything that goes down is to be preferred. Okay, it's probably Ren's room or another enforcer. There's no sign on the door, is there? Knockout meatball. You found a scrap of paper with a knockout meatball recipe written on it. Learned knockout meatball recipe. Nice. Uh, no matter where you go in this life, there's always someone looking to take you for all you've got. It happened to me, and it will happen to you. More recipes! Recipes! EP Charge 2. I know it's not much fun to open an empty chest, but think about how much fun it would be to open it when it still had something in it. Ah, the memories. Well, game, if you put something else in there, it could be another brand new memory. Okay, so... You are here. Elevator to Sanctuary. Elevator to Four Castle. Thank you. Now I know not to go into that elevator just yet. Oh, silly me. The Sanctuary isn't this way. Okay, so we're technically blocked off a little bit. Come on, the elevator is just over there. So I wonder if you're allowed to go the other way around. Probably not. Oops, silly me. The sanctuary is not this way. We need to use the elevator on the opposite side of the hallway. Alright, let's do it. Access to the sanctuary in the engine room is restricted. Please provide voice identification. Enforcer number 15, Ren. Codename Angel of Slaughter. Destination Sanctuary. Access granted. Welcome, Enforcer Ren. Mm -mm -mm. And here we are. This is the sanctuary. The professor should be just inside. Oh, Ren. What is it? Were you the one controlling that Joshua puppet in the base? Uh-huh, that's right. And the professor asked me to. Neat, huh? 
Uh, so you're the, a victim of the society too? Hmm? Never mind. Well, here I go. See you later. Uh, can't wait until we get run out of here. Just go down this hallway and you'll be in the sanctuary. Go on, the professor's waiting. And how do I know we're gonna take her out of here? Because that's what, what uh, Estelle would do. I know she uh, will do her best to do it. Talk about uh, impressive. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but this does really fit uh, his persona, doesn't it? <laughs> ah, so many beautiful shots this episode. It's gonna be really hard to pick one. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Glorious. It's been some time since we last met, Estelle. Ah, Professor Alba. I thought it was you. I'd finally remembered when I heard your name in a minute ago. Ah, Cassius Brightest daughter continues to impress. The seal on your memory wasn't particularly strong, but throwing it off on your own is still worth some manner of praise. My apologies. I have yet to properly introduce myself. My true name is George Wiseman. I am the one of the Anguish, supervisor of the society. An Anguish? So you're like one of the highest commander of the society? Hmm, something like that. Now, as I said before, I am completely prepared to answer any question you may have. What would you like to ask first? Honestly, there's so much to ask. I'm not even sure where to start. Ah, you needn't fret. Take your time thinking things over. But you just look at his face. Look at his eyes. No matter what he says, you cannot help to think there's something else going on in the background. He's not sincere. He's trying to manipulate me. 100%. If it pleases you, I could play a relaxing attitude. Attitude. While well, you collect your thoughts. Yeah, I think I'll pass. You know, you didn't strike me as someone who'd be into that sort of thing. Well, whatever. Here's a question for you. Was the whole poor archaeologist thing a total act or what? <laughs> Putting the poverty aside, I actually am an archaeologist. And as an aside, I picked up the pipe organ during my time with the church. I may not be that Erebonian you spend so much time with, but... I dare say I am decent, wouldn't you? Hang on, the church? Like the Septian. I was something of an academic priest. A chance meeting with the Grand Master led me to let me discarding the path of faith. Yes, the Grand Master, the absolute top of the organization. I wonder who that is. My knowledge of artifacts, poultry as it is, still proves useful from time to time, thankfully. With our current plan in particular, the one who tempted Colonel Richard into starting the coup, and the one who arranged all the gospel experiments, it was you. I th it certainly was, and it was all for the sake of our cause. Your gospel plan? I saw something in the research facility about that. Your plan is to take the Aureole, isn't it? Take the Aureole? That's not entirely accurate, but for the purpose of this conversation, it will suffice, yes. What is the Aureole, anyway? Why do you want it so bad? I know it's said to be one of the treasures of Ideos, but just what is it? Ah, uh, for the moment, I must keep the exact nature of the Aureole a secret. I would, after all, so hate to spoil the surprise. Hmm, the surprise, right, thanks. Our plan has moved into its third phase. Very, very soon. Its true nature will be plain to see. <laughs> I can barely con contain my anticipation. 
And once the aureole has shown itself, then, then we will see the potential of mankind unfurl before our eyes. The potential of mankind? Ragnar said something about that too. Oh, the holy beast was willing to bestow his wisdom upon you? Perhaps you are doing more than simply living in your father's shadow. Ah, oh, spare me the flattery. And what the hell? I keep asking you things and you keep dodging the answers. Oh, do forgive me. It wasn't my intention to be so evasive. I can, however, answer the question I know you want to ask most. Where's Joshua? The, the what? What keeps you from asking it? Don't be afraid. Muster your courage and ask it of me. Joshua. Where's Joshua? <laughs> well, his exact location is currently unknown to me. From what I've observed, he's up to something with those sky bandits. Their movements have proven to be quite elusive. Though he is alive and well, I can assure you. Okay. Well, Joshua's specialties are covert operations and guerrilla warfare. I was the one who turned to tuned him to excel at such, but he has long since surpassed even my greatest expectations. <laughs> I gleefully await seeing the height of his potential. You. Ah, oh, come on. You needn't look so angry. When Joshua was entrusted to my care, his heart was akin to a glass ornament dashed against a paving stone. He was my first attempt at rebuilding such a shattered soul. It did, is it not natural, you think, for an academic to be curious about the result of his work? What did you tell Joshua on the day of the Queen's birthday celebrations? I merely removed the block on his memory and told him the truth. That he, once taken into your home, had unwittingly been acting as a spy and sending guilt information to the society. That Richard's coup succeeded in his own right because of him. And finally that, thanks to his efforts, the ground was at last fertile for our plan. <laughs> I even rewarded him. I formally released him from his obligations to the society. I, I finally get it. Why Joshua that night? Why he disappeared? Why he said goodbye with that look on his face? <laughs> yes. I must say, I did find that regrettable. To think Joshua would abandon you so coldly after regaining himself. I recommend that he just pretend he knew nothing of it and continue his life with you. But alas, I suppose my generosity backfired, no? <sighs> I'm amazed. I'm amazed you can even say that. You were the one who chased Joshua into a corner in the first place. He didn't have a choice. So he had to, to look like that and give his harmonica to me and say goodbye Estelle. All of it, every last bit, it's all your fault. Not yet strong enough. But we'll get there. Noe, what the hell did you came from? Oh, I was here from the start. You simply didn't bother to notice. <laughs> this disc, what an undignified performance. Hmm. Of course, the other enforcers. Hmm, you performed so well in completing my challenges too. Did I not teach you to think before you act? Ah, come on, give her some credit. It takes balls to pick a fight with him. Agreed. Regardless of her skills, her courage certainly is impressive. Though, I wonder if you could call it courage or mere foolishness. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> so you're the Divine Blade's daughter. Yeah, we know who that is. Campanella. Ah, this will be the first time we've met. I am Enforcer number zero, Campanella the Fool. Nice to meet you. Another one? Oh, stop it, you guys. You're scaring us, though. Well. 
Ren too? No, you don't need to worry, Estelle. I know what I said last time, but we aren't here to hurt you or anything. I promise. Hmm? Hey, Professor. Why not ask Estelle right now? Well, now is as good a time as any. How about it, Estelle? Would you like to join Ouroboros? Uh... What? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I must have misheard that. Would you say that one more time? I asked if you would like to join the Society of Ouroboros. You wouldn't become a full-fledged enforcer right away, of course. You would be more of a candidate for the position. Well, well, are you insane? Oh, come now. It's hardly the leap of logic you're thinking. Joshua has been rather stubborn about returning, but with you here, he would undoubtedly come back to us. And to you. Oh, uh... Estelle, you want to see Joshua again more than anything else, right? If you join us, that will come true right away. What's there to even think about? But... but... I... Now, Ren, Estelle might need some time to weigh her options. We will be departing the ship for a little while on business, Estelle. You may give us an answer when we return. And I do apologize for this, but your options must remain fairly limited during your stay. Feel free to request anything you need, but you will be staying in your cabin. Very much understandable. Even if he genuinely wants her to join them, until she says yes, he cannot trust her. If I join the society, I'll meet Joshua again? That's all but guaranteed. And besides, I don't have to join them for real, right? I can just, like, pretend to join them and learn more about how they operate. I'm not the best actress in the world, so it might be hard, but it's better than just being locked up. She can't do this. It's not in her nature. See? No, that's stupid. That isn't the way I do things. Uh, pardon me. Hmm? You! <laughs> no need to be so on guard. I have no intention of harming you, though if you try something like that stunt of yours earlier, I may have no other choice. Yeah, well, sorry. What are you doing here anyway? Weren't you guys going out somewhere? The professor and the others are the ones who will be advancing the plan. I'm staying behind and minding the glorious. What is it you people are planning on doing? If you wish to find out, why not accept the professor's invitation? You learn most of our plans if you do. <laughs> it seems you have your answer, but you're still hesitating, aren't you? Hmm. If you want my advice, Estelle Bright. That was an accident. <laughs> I accidentally pressed the button. In both ability and personality. I have to rewatch that when I'm editing. <laughs> Man, do you have to be so completely blunt about it? Now oh, don't misunderstand me. The potential for the necessary skill is within you, somewhere. But your personality? You have too little darkness within you to be part of Ouroboros. Darkness. All those in service of the Grand Master bear some kind of darkness on their shoulders. Myself, the Professor, the other Enforcers. Joshua too, needless to say. Hey, what's your relationship to Joshua anyway? I can guess he's at least a, um, a townie. You mean someone who lived in the same village as Joshua? On the other hand... It could also be his brother, seeing as they have the same eyes. Our relationship? Joshua was weirdly focused on you. He seemed to know who you were, even though he didn't recognize you with the mask on. And on top of that, it seems like he was desperately to find out who you were. That doesn't surprise me. The professor sealed part of his memory away. He was hypnotized in such a way that the moment he left the society, he could remember little about us. 
even if he remembers his actions as part of society, he could not remember his confederates. And looking at the picture of Loi right now, it looks more purple. I thought they had amber eyes as well. Or is it Zren that has the amber eyes? Hmm. Then definitely somebody new from the past. Well, I think Loi is from Hamble as well. That would have been the core of his dilemma. That's... The memories of his childhood would be the same. Even if he remembers Karen, he likely would have only loosely remembered me. I see, so that's why... Wait, Karen? I've heard that name before. Karen Estray, a childhood friend of mine and Joshua's older sister. She died 10 years ago. What? That harmonica you have was originally Karen's. Joshua held onto it as a memento. And then it was passed on to you. Joshua had an older sister? Hmm, how? How did Karen pass away? I hope you know what you're really asking. The answer to that question requires staring into the abyss in which Joshua and the rest of us reside. And trust me, it will stare back. Are you prepared for that? Tell me. I don't know if I'm ready for what's coming or whatever, but I want to know what kind of path Joshua has followed. If nothing else, I have to know that. As you wish. It was a little over 10 years ago, back when you could still find the village of Hamel on maps of Erebonia and Liberal. Hamel was a tiny little place. There weren't many other young people, so the three of us were always together. I dreamed of becoming a bracer and I spent my free time practicing my swordsmanship. Karen and Joshua would watch and encourage me. That was how we willed away the days. <sighs> Once I was done with practice, we would turn our ears to Karen's harmonica. Karen could play anything on that harmonica, anything. But my favorite was always the old Erebonian folk song, The Whereabouts of Light. It seemed like the bliss would last forever. We believed that. We had no reason to doubt it. That day dawned and began just like any other. And then day came. A band of invaders, garbed in black and armed with Librillion weaponry, came out of nowhere. They encircled the village and slaughtered everyone in sight. None were spared. Not the old and infirm. Not the young and the defenseless. Not even infants. Those who were killed quickly in the opening moments were the luckiest by far. And the women, women, even in this telling, there were some things I will not recount. Horrible things. We fled desperately from that hell. We were lucky to be in a position to escape when the attack began. We fled for the outskirts of the village. The screams of our own families carried to our ears on the wind. Once we got onto the outskirts, I told Karen and Joshua I would act as bait to confuse any pursuers. I promised them I would catch up to them as soon and send them ahead. But the attackers, they laid their plans well. They had people in position to deal with any who tried to flee. And they killed her? When I finally caught up to them, the scene was strangely quiet. A man, dead, shot through the throat. Joshua with a gun in his hand, dumbstruck, and Karen holding Joshua with a horrific wound on her back. She was barely breathing at that point. Even now, the scene seems surreal to me. Karen was calm and content. She entrusted her Monica to Joshua, then asked that I take care of him. And then, she died quietly, there in that clearing. Why? On? Why? Did that? 
The Empire invaded Liberal almost immediately afterwards. A defensive little village, its inhabitants slaughtered by men with Liberalian arms. It was almost too perfect an excuse to invade. It, it can't be... Liberalian troops doing that? When the local garrison found out, they were adamant the invaders were Liberalian. When the war ended a few months later with the Empire's defeat, however, we were given a different tale entirely. They told us instead that a brand of, band of Jaeger dropouts had turned to pure brigandry. And they told us to never speak to anyone else of the attack. The Erebonian authorities announced that Hemel had been destroyed in a landslide, and all roads leading there were to be closed completely. H hold on, what? Why would they lie about that? Neither explanation makes sense. That's almost like... <laughs> Indeed, everything was a fabrication by the Warhawks in the Empire, to justify the invasion of Liberal. At the end of the war, the ruse was discovered, and the Imperial government was thrown into a panic. They conceded to a comprehensive peace and executed nearly everyone involved in the plot, all to pretend that it never happened. That is still right? It's the tragedy of Hamel in full. That was also when Joshua's heart was broken entirely. He was now burdened with the torturous death of his sister, his parents and everyone he knew. And even the shock of taking another man's life. How could that not shatter the soul of a six-year-old child? You've likely heard the rest from Joshua. His spirit was so wholly broken that he lost all will to do anything but play that harmonica. He began to waste away. That was when the two of us were found by Wiseman. To save Joshua's life, I then trusted him to Wiseman's care and threw myself into Ouroboros training. And then, two years later, Joshua's repaired as he was by Wiseman followed the same path. This is darkness, Estelle Bright. Do you understand what sort of gulf separates you and Joshua now? Do you understand what he stares into every day? I do. Yeah. Now I think I really understand why Joshua left. Hmm? Hey, next time you see him, tell Wiseman thanks, but no thanks. I'll never join Ouroboros. It's not because I like or dislike the society, but as long as I'm going to pull Joshua back over that gulf you mentioned, forget it. Although, I do feel kind of bad about letting Ren down after she went through all this trouble to invite me. Hey, you think she'll forgive me if I say I'm sorry? <laughs> You're one of a kind, Des Elbright. To hear those horrors and thus lose your hesitation? You truly are more than just the daughter of the Divine Blade. <laughs> uh, thanks for the compliment, I guess. <laughs> and you say all that, but you care about Joshua too, right? You guys were friends. Or maybe more like brothers. Hmm. Let me be clear. That was 10 years ago. To me now, he's nothing more than a rogue element to be eliminated. I seriously doubt that. I, 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 I mean that, I seriously doubt that. I'm not saying he wouldn't attack Joshua, but he would definitely do it with a heavy heart. The professor seemed to enjoy letting Joshua do as he pleases. I have a different plan in mind. Sooner or later, I will deal with Joshua personally. Wait a second, w what the hell is this? Karen asks you to take care of him. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I have my own path I've chosen for myself. I've dedicated myself to my goal, and any who stands in my way shall die by my blade. Not even Karen's final request will stop me. How... how can you? Huh? <gasps> Battleships? Are they out to uh, attack something? Those are... The Professor and the others, yes. 
It looks like the third stage of the plan is getting underway. The third stage? What's... <laughs> That's not for you to know. Once we're finished, you'll be returned to your father. Behave until then. Now, just a... As one final note, don't even think of attempting to escape. The Glorious is 8,000 arch above ground. You have nowhere to run. Unless Joshua is on the ship. Like I said, he hitched a ride on one of their uh, pl uh, planes. He is somewhere. He could, he could just as well be on the ship. Oh, don't even think of attempting to escape, he says. As if he doesn't know that it's in his human nature for me to want to do exact opposite. Besides, he's the only enforcer on board. <laughs> Alright, why not? Let's do this. Out the window? <laughs> okay, the timing is gonna be everything. If I can figure that out, I'll be good. Let's see. I'll wait a couple of hours until they let their guard down and then... Right, it's worth a shot. Is he gonna do the same thing that uh, Thor did in Ragnarok? Going through the window? She might, right? So this was a memento of Karen, huh? You shouldn't throw away something like this so easily, you idiot. Time to execute? Hey, time to change shifts. How's the girl acting? Huh, quiet as a mouse. She might be a bracer, but she's still just a child. Probably curled up in bed, scared out of her mind. Hmm, <laughs> babysitting while everyone else is out sucks. This is so boring, I want to get out there, into the action. Ah, quit your whining. These are Lionheart's orders. And hell if I'm not gonna follow his instructions to the letter. Hmm? What was that sound? Hey, what you doing? I get it. Break the window, hide under the bed, and when they come in, you smack them down. She escaped? Damn it! That stupid girl, does she not get where she is? Is she trying to kill herself or something? Ah, Gehenna take me right now. She probably fell. We have to... Uh, we have got to be kidding me. Are we going to tell Lionheart that'll uh, let us keep our heads? Ah, oh, that damn brat. Nothing but a load of trouble. Hmm, damn brat, huh? <laughs> Very cool. Not even slightly expected that. <laughs> Nice try, old man. Ugh. Hmm. Never underestimate the bracer. First of all, don't you think that was a little rude, calling a sweet maiden like me a dumb brat? It wasn't me. I didn't call you that, I swear. Oh, you didn't. Well, you didn't correct your buddy then either way. It's nap time for you. Ugh. Uh, you gotta love Estelle. Okay. Reinforcements are probably gonna get here really quick, so I should book it. There's gotta be some way of this boat. And I won't give up. Not until I see Joshua. Not until I see that dummy again. You won't stop for anything, Loey? Well, neither will I. Do 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 do. Ah, very cool. All right, I'm gonna leave it here. <laughs> Next time we're gonna fully explore the ship, 
trying to find a way out. There has to be a way. Maybe we can confiscate one of those uh, ships. If they're on here. And we then can fly away maybe? Yeah. We have a lot of things we need to figure out on how to do that. But if anyone can do it, it's gonna be Estelle. So this is gonna be next time. Until then, I wish you a great night, morning, day, wherever you are. And if you're still here, hit that like button, subscribe, and be back next time just to see if Estelle manages to escape. Bye-bye.